Okay, so since that disarmed, we can pass that. Hit next. Okay, so now we're doing a synchronized cardio version. And what it's doing for what's doing is looking for the R wave in a PQRS uh, phenomenon. So we are going to have to let's see, make sure the pads lead is selected. Okay, so up in the top here, very top um, soft key, we have the ability to change the leads. So we are in the lead two right now. We're going to change to turn three, AVR, AVL, AVF, B1, two, three, four, five six and then pads so that's what we want right now um, and we're going to input a 60 uh, 60 volt 1 millivolt sorry 1 millivolt ECG signal at 60 beats a minute sounds confusing but it's already been programmed so what we're going to do is um, once it finds the R wave it's going to do a shock on the person or on the defib so it's already been set Everything's been set to the all to that, so man, I'm really starting today. All I have to do is hit start. Um, I will have to go down here. There's a little sync button. Might as well hit sync right now, and it's looking for that R wave to sync to, so it can actually shock the patient. So we're going to hit start right now. Please charge the defibrillator. So right now it's detecting the R wave. It says our wave not detected, but it will eventually detect it. So I'm going to charge it up. Nope, oh, it's already detected it. It's okay. So. So it detected the R wave and it shocked at 16 milliseconds. And this test is only looking for how fast does it actually do this. So. The high is 60 milliseconds and the low is 0 milliseconds. So we hit 16 milliseconds and that's usually the middle point. Um, it's, it usually ranges from about, I say, 11 milliseconds to maybe 20 milliseconds. I don't think I've ever seen anything above 20. So that's good. All right, so now we're doing the pacer test. So I have actually two different leads here. This one's pacer and this one's defib only. And it feel like switching out the things all the time. So that's in there. I'm gonna switch pacer. Okay. So we're gonna hit next here, and the pacer test is one of the easiest ones. So I usually just hit start right now. Um, and it it says test in progress, so we'll actually start looking for. Okay, it's looking for a measurement right now. So right here we hit the pacer button. Now to actually begin the pacer, you have to hit the button where it says. Uh, start pacer and that will actually start printing off another strip so just stop that it's a waste of paper for me and we want demand mode and we want the lowest rate possible and the lowest output possible so the rate is pulses per minute output is in millivolts maybe or millijoules milliamps okay so we're at 30, 30 pulse, pulses a minute with 10 milliamps. And we're getting 30 pulses a minute and 9.84 milliamps. So that's great. I can just stop the test and it passed. Of course it would. And the next pacer test is the actual the maximum that it can do. So we're going to go up to, I think it's 160, 180. And the output, I don't even remember, 140 maybe. Okay, so 140. The rate is going to be 180 beats a minute, output is 140 milliamps. So we are getting 179.6 out of 180, and for the milliamps, 143.1. So that all falls in between the standards, so we'll stop the test, and it passed. So we're going to turn off the pacer. next and now we're going to do the treatment report so the treatment report is seeing does it actually hold all the information that you just did to all of this so uh, we're going to go back to the defib cable this is called the multifunction cable it does pacing as well as defibrillation so that's why I call it multifunction the MFC cable all right so 
treatment report. I have to read this because I don't always remember. All right, so we're going to go to this little trash can. We're going to find the trash can on the soft keys over here. So we're going to hit this little um, back button, and we're going to go to log here. There's a little button right underneath this yellow bell. There's a log button here. And once the log comes up, we can see the treatment. We can print the trends. Don't know what that is. Print to USB and delete. And yes, we want to delete all the logs. So it'll reprint that thing out. And then we're going to create our own log. So we're going to charge it up 200, 200 joules. And shock it. Okay, and then it says on here, wait 20 seconds and press the treatment key and select the first code marker. Okay, so what does that mean? Alright, so we're going to hit the back button right here, and we're going to go to the treatment report. I think it's a treatment, treatment key. So that's what the RX stands for. And there's a little cross right here underneath. Of, you can actually change uh, the contrast from white uh, or to the night vision. So they usually keep it as the night vision. The white is good for just normal weather where I usually I don't usually keep it that way. I'm used to the other. So <coughs> excuse me. I'm gonna hit the treatment report right here and it says hit the first code marker. So we're gonna hit O2, which is just oxygen. I'm gonna hit that. Okay. And then it says wait fifteen seconds and turn off the unit. After that, we're supposed to wait two minutes and turn the unit back on, and then we'll go from there. So I'm going to turn the unit off, and I'll be right back with you guys. All right, so we have our trends right here. So it found the two events and um, the O2 that we did. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is... The end tidal CO2. Alright, so for the end tidal, I have to have 5% O2 or CO2, my mistake. And the other stuff really doesn't matter, but the, uh, the main piece that it has to have is it has to have the 5% CO2. That's what is required for this unit itself. So in order to do that, we're going to go to our back button here. We're going to go to the gear supervisor. Again, one, two, three, four. Save. Uh, service. I got these. And then we're going to we're going to go to diagnostic here, and that's where we see CO2. And it said the last time it was calibrated was 6:26, so it's two days from now. So, this right here, this end goes into the side here, and this little ring right here, I've had them before where they say they've, they're bad, and this little ring was missing. So these are one, one time use, but uh, for whatever reason, something was happening with these, they weren't making good contact. So, and I've also actually had stuff, a little, I don't know what it was, it looked like a piece of fuzz and it was actually stuck inside of here and this wasn't making contact so I changed out the whole board before I realized that piece was in there and I kinda just, you know what, we'll just keep it that way so changed out the board, that was it so we're gonna put this inside the ETCO2 hole and we're gonna twist it to the right alright so nice and tight okay so we're gonna go down here to calibration and we're going to hit calibrate. Now, I won't start the gas until it says to start. Please wait module warming up. Once it says it's good, I'm going to begin the gas process. All right, calibration and process. So I'm going to depress the cylinder. I am placing gas inside the unit.
And this whole, all right, calibration gas can be removed. All right, I'm not gonna hit anything. I have messed this up before. We're not gonna hit anything at all. Once this says calibration gas can be removed, just stay there. And I'll actually say down here if it's passed, It sometimes can be a minute or two, usually no more than a minute, actually usually it's less than that. Alright, calibration done, okay. After that though, we have to verify the calibration. So we're going to hit verify calibration, verification in process, progress, we want to ignite the gas. And it'll do the exact same thing, where it'll say gal calibration gas can be removed. And then it'll say something along the lines of um, it found 4.9% um, CO2, which is fine. And as long as it says it passes, it's good. Calibration gas can be removed. All right, verification done. Okay, 5.1%. That's perfect. All right, so we're going to go back. Take that out. And then what I like to do, I personally turn it off and turn it back on to eliminate the error if there is one that it needs to be calibrated. So after we have to do that, we also have to test to see if it's actually working or not. So this is for uh, intubation. So whenever a person has an intubation, a um, ET tube down their throat, this will actually hook on to the end of it so they can monitor how much um, CO2 is being expired. So we're going to do the same process. We're going to place that in there. And we're going to hit CO2 up here. That actually enables this whole thing to work. So it starts initializing. In the meantime, we can pass all of these and okay we did the verification and now we're doing the CO2 itself so all you're going to do is just breathe into it you're going to watch the little graph here go up and down as well as the breath rate There's my graph right there, so it's looking good. So if I just if I just pull this out, it'll start alarming that hey, you can't find it, something's wrong. There's nothing wrong. I just disconnected it. In order to get rid of this whole thing, uh, you're going to want to actually disable the CO2. So after we hit that, that'll stop moving. All right, so it's good, 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 good. No, oh, I don't want software. All right, SpO2. Right now, my SpO2 sensor is being calibrated, so I can't do that right now. So I'm gonna have to hit not not applicable for right now. All right, so here's when we start the invasive blood pressure, as well as every. This is what I call step two. Um, step one has everything to do with the impulse 7000. Step two is everything to do with the other unit, which is, I love how Zoll has it set up. They have it set up strictly for these things. So uh, let's begin.